Hello everyone, hope you're having an amazing day today. Welcome to the Film Insight channel. For today's video, we're going to discuss more restaurants featured on Kitchen Nightmares and reveal how they are now. So, without further ado, let's get right into the content, guys! Sam's Mediterranean Kebab Room Owned by Sam Najjar and his family, Sam's Mediterranean Kebab Room is a restaurant that Gordon Ramsay visited in the sixth season of the show. Working in the restaurant since 1982, as a busboy, he decided to purchase it and become the official owner in 1997. While things were doing well already, it slowly went downhill after the ownership change and Najjar was forced to fire most of his staff to reduce costs. Being $70,000 in debt and relying on family members as staff who were bitter about being forced to work at the restaurant, they really needed help and fast. Calling Gordon Ramsay over, when he finally arrives, he's shocked to learn that all of their children work at the business. Not only this, but they work 12 hour shifts a day, 7 days a week, and it's clear that none of them want to work there anymore. Having their own dreams and aspirations, Ramsay can tell how miserable they are not being able to pursue them. Greeting the owner, the situation is made even worse when he finds out that he doesn't even pay his children. How disgusting. His reasoning is that he can't afford to pay them wages, but he tries to justify it by saying that they live all at his home for free. Asking for the owner to rate his food, he says it's a 9 out of 10 and recommends that he orders a lamb shank. Though, scanning through the menu, he finds many spelling errors which is very unprofessional. Finally deciding on ordering the vegetable combo, which was absolutely dreadful, the lamb shank that he described to look anemic, a yido which is bought in, and a sorline steak which is really dry. Calling the staff together, he tells them exactly how he felt about the food which was clearly negative and it makes the chef admit that he's given up. Inspecting the kitchen, he finds moldy food and the walk-in fridge has buckets filled with chopped parsley, bendy celery, soft cucumbers, and rotting lettuce. The following day, Ramsay gathers the children together and explains to them that they should be completely honest with their father. After a lot of tearful conversation, Ramsay was finally able to start making some valuable changes. Modernizing the overall design, revamping the menu and giving it more contemporary Mediterranean food, customers were loving the new restaurant. Months after the Kitchen Nightmares team left, the children were given time off while Najjar tried to find new staff. However, the restaurant ended up closing down in January 2014 and the owner expressed that appearing on the show didn't change much. While they did receive a surge in business two weeks after the episode aired, it didn't help their long-term business. It's not very surprising considering they got very mixed reviews following the show, most complaining about the poor food and service. Chappies after Hurricane Katrina ravaged their successful restaurant, John Chapman and his wife Star were forced to relocate. Calling their new restaurant Chappies, it didn't do very well and according to the couple, it's due to the locals' lack of understanding of Cajun cuisine. On the other hand, their own staff blamed John due to his poor management skills and his humongous ego. For instance, there's footage of him kicking out a customer simply because they had a complaint about their salad. Great service. Anyway, with some clear problems at hand, John calls out to the legendary chef Gordon Ramsay for some aid. Arriving, he meets with John who describes the Nashville locals to not be receptive to the restaurant which perplexes him since supposedly his food is 10 out of 10. Finally ordering some food to put this claim to the test, everything predictably takes either bland, watery, or dry. Observing the dinner service, he notices that there is an open pot filled with oysters capped at room temperature. Ramsay also catches a glimpse of the cook using a pan he cooks steak with to prepare fish for a pescatarian, which is a term John never heard of. Asking the pescatarian customer to explain it to the ignorant owner, she says that meat would make her really sick. Taking a look at the walk-in freezer, he finds yellow mayonnaise that expired over 3 years ago, moldy and rotting food, as well as some cooked and raw meat stored next to each other. John learns that their food tasted burnt, is not authentic Cajun, is low quality, and is way too overpriced, especially considering the bad atmosphere. Ready to change, Chef Ramsay's time to work his magic came at last. Changing the restaurant's decor to make it more modern and reducing the menu of over 100 items down to 22 contemporary Cajun recipes, John is not a fan of the makeover. However, the staff were really happy with the changes and were in love with the new food after sampling it. Weeks after Chef Ramsay left, despite the fact that they were getting really positive feedback, John decided to revert back to his old ways. What's even worse is that this idiotic owner has given several high-profile interviews expressing that Chef Ramsay wrecked his business. It doesn't make any logical sense that he would claim this since not even 4 weeks after the episode aired, he went back to the old menu. On Yelp, things were very split with some customers wanting the old menu to come back while others praised the new one. In the end, Chappies closed down in June of 2013 since the restaurant was seized by the state due to tax evasion. John claimed until the very end that Kitchen Nightmares ruined his restaurant, but we all know whose fault it really is. Mama Maria's Sal and Maria Esposito opened an Italian restaurant called Mama Maria's in 1970, which was met with two decades of success. 
That is until their son John took over in 1990 since he was overwhelmed with the amount of work required. It didn't exactly help though that he's an extremely stubborn person who's unwilling to change, making him very hard to work with. Not really knowing how to fix this horrible mess, John reaches out to the Kitchen Nightmares team for some help. When Chef Ramsay arrives, he's unimpressed with the shabby look of the restaurant, especially the signage which is littered with holes. Entering, he meets with John who explains that all their pizzas are homemade and delicious but that the problem lies in the lack of clientele due to increased competition. Meeting with a waitress named Lori, she expresses that the true issue is John's poor sense of leadership. Ordering some food, it's simply tasteless and dry which leads Chef Ramsay into believing that the food is frozen. Heading into the kitchen to investigate, Ramsay comes across Joe, Oscar, and Valentino who work in the kitchen. Coming clean, John admits that it takes way too long to make meatballs fresh and their chef comes out and says that their food is just poor quality. During service, it comes to Ramsay's attention that one vegetarian customer found a bone in her pasta while another was in the bathroom throwing up. The patient was so incredibly sick that they had to call the ambulance and the Kitchen Nightmares host was forced to shut down the restaurant for the day. Coming back the following day, he's repulsed by the buckets of frozen ingredients and sauces covered in mold in their food storage. Demanding that he throw out all the frozen food to avoid making another person sick, John complies and Ramsay is finally able to start turning things around. Giving the restaurant a new sign, revamping the interior, and updating the menu to include fresh items, it seemed like Mama Maria's was going in the right direction. After Ramsay left, business was reported to have gone up by 10% since John has generally kept up with Ramsay's changes. While he did add in some customer favorites back, the menu is still more or less the same which explains why they're still open and rocking 4.5 stars on Yelp with 122 reviews. Prohibition Grill Belly dancer Rishi Brown decided to open up a restaurant in 2008 with no experience called Prohibition Grill. It should be obvious but the restaurant has been struggling from the get-go losing $100,000 a year. Desperately needing some guidance, Brown calls out the chef Ramsey who upon arriving at the restaurant is disturbed to find the owner belly dancing in front of customers. When asked about her decision to own a restaurant, she expresses that she was drunk when she wanted to buy the restaurant and despite the word grill in their name, they don't even own one. Already colossally disappointed, Ramsay orders some food which is so disgusting that it makes him somewhat angry. Rating the food 0 out of 10, Brown refuses to acknowledge that there's a problem with the food they serve. Going on to inspect the fridge, the famous chef finds a ton of raw and cooked meat being stored next to each other, some rotting fish, and old food. The following day, the staff exposed Chef Rocky, expressing that he goes outside to smoke during busy service and takes 3% of all tips. Eventually firing the useless chef, Ramsay gives Brown a cooking lesson and promises that he'll find her a new chef. Changing the restaurant's theme and overall decor, as well as making a new and simple menu with delicious dishes, customers were absolutely loving it. Several weeks after the restaurant was reborn, it became a humongous hit and the owner felt much more in control of her business. While business was certainly much higher than usual, the changes made were not all completely well received. Some Yelp reviewers who were regulars expressed that they liked the old menu better, while the new ones loved how things changed. Deciding on selling the restaurant to Brenton Holland in 2016, he kept the same name and decor but chose to focus on steak and whiskey, though it sadly met its end in July of 2017. Well, that'll be all for today's video here on the channel. I do hope you enjoyed, and if you did, be sure to drop a massive like down below and comment your thoughts. Subscribe for more content like this and turn on those sweet bell notifications for instant access to our content. Have a good one, guys.